You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Working Like Dogs is brought to you by Petco.com. Petco is a leading specialty retailer of premium pet food supplies and services, offering more than 10,000 high-quality pet-related products. Enter the code WORK, W-O-R-K, and save 10% on orders of $65 or more, plus free shipping at Petco.com. Hello, and welcome to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Thank you for joining us today. We're your hosts. My name is Marcy Davis and my trusty service dog, Whistle. And Whistle and I are so thrilled to be with you today to talk about our favorite subject, working dogs and working animals. And today our guest on Working Like Dogs is Lisa Vesper. And Lisa works at the El Dorado Animal Clinic here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And Lisa was born and raised in Arlington, Virginia, and she grew up with lots of cats, dogs, and horses, where she later attended the James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and earned a Bachelor's of Science degree. And after graduating from college, she worked in Washington, D.C. and New York City before relocating to Santa Fe in 1989. And Lisa manages the El Dorado Animal Clinic, and she manages a large staff there, and that's where Whistle and I know her from, because Lisa is Whistle's vet manager. So we love El Dorado Animal Clinic, and Lisa has helped us with a whole lot of things over the years, and one of those things has been travel. And that's what we're going to talk about today with Lisa, is how to travel with your assistance dog. So please come right back after these messages as we welcome Lisa Vesper. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Hey, boy, how you doing? (coughs) What am I doing? (coughs) I'm creating your own life book. It's a website that's just for you. Remember that picture I took of you pulling off Lisa's bathing suit? (laughs) Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm putting that awesome picture on your Lifebook page. We'll see what comments we get. And that great video we took of you standing on the table with your head inside the turkey? That's definitely going on there. No, it's easy. It only took me two minutes to set up your page. I chose a great theme, and I can connect with millions of other pet parents. I can also create a memorial life book. No, not for Grandma, but we can make one for Fluffy, remember her? And we can even put links to our favorite pet charity. And friends can make donations. People can create their own life book for their pets by going to PetLifeRadio.LivingYearsPets.com or they can sign up on the Pet Life Radio homepage. <coughs> Where's Lisa? She's outside by the pool. Hey, come back here! <coughs> create your own life book for your pet. PetLifeRadio.LivingYearsPets.com Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And you know, as the human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another discussion of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Pet Life Radio, Working Like Dogs. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Lisa Vesper. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, Marcy. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we're Whistle and I are so excited for you to be here. You are one of Whistle's favorite people in the world. He goes crazy every time he sees you at the El Dorado Clinic. Well, I love to see Whistle, too. 
<laughs> well, and Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about how to travel with your service dog. Because you know that's been an issue for me over the years. So I'm so excited that we can just talk about it. And I'd like to start with talking about traveling with your assistance dog within the United States. Is there any kind of documentation or any kind of things that people should think about as they travel? And I guess what what I'm really referring to is traveling from state to state. Okay. Good question, Marcy. Um, Absolutely. Whether it's an assistance dog or a pet, traveling takes some forethought and planning. And the first thing you should travel with is your rabies certificate and a health certificate. Each state, somewhat like traveling to foreign countries, has different requirements. So it's a good idea to go online, talk to your veterinarian, find out any requirements for a specific state. Um, It's always a good idea to carry your pet's health records with you. And in case of emergency, to have the most recent blood work that's been done on your pet or any other information from your veterinarian. You can always get that information, but if you have an emergency and it's during hours that your clinic is not open, it will help the attending veterinarian if you've got that information with you. Um, So can you get that from your vet, like the health certificate that you mentioned? How do you get that? Absolutely. Make an appointment for your veterinarian. Make sure they understand that you need a health certificate and they can do some work ahead of time to make sure that you have all of the information needed for the health certificate. Depending on where you're traveling, you may need to have different vaccines than what are required in your part of the country and you may need to be on a heartworm preventative, flea prevention, uh, depending on where you're traveling again. Yeah. Well, I know one thing I always do when I travel with Whistle is I have a file folder that I keep in my suitcase or in my carry-on bag or whatever that I'm going to have with me just in case so that I have all of his latest shots. Another thing I love to keep in there is just the law that just says that he has access. And I got that from my service dog agency, which is so cool. So I just keep that in the file folder as well. That's a great idea, or, or any a physician's statement that certifies the disability and why you have a service dog. All of these documents can be very important when traveling. How long is the health certificate good for, Lisa? So, like, if somebody travels quite a bit, could they keep it for a certain length of time, or do they need to get these documents for every trip? It is completely dependent on where they're traveling, so there is no set rules. Some health certificates are good for two weeks, some for 30 days, some for four months. So all of it is depending on where you're going to. Okay, well that's good to know because I always think that in the United States I really don't need as much information as of course as you do when you're traveling outside. But but the more I travel within the United States, the more I learn that I really need to be prepared not only with all the paperwork, but with some other things in case there's an emergency. Because I've actually had an emergency arise with Whistle. He got sick when I was on a trip in Denver, and I had to take him to another veterinarian instead of Mert, my usual vet. Um, And so it was really great that I had some of those things with me. Other things that are always good to take with you when you're traveling, like a doggy first aid kit that would include bandaging material, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, perhaps sedatives for travel that would be provided by your veterinarian, Pepto-Bismol, Imodium, um, bringing a supply of your dog's own food because switching diets can certainly wreak havoc on their gastrointestinal system a supply of any current medications that they're on. And just in case of emergency, it would be a good idea to have written copies of the prescriptions that your dog is on, if they're on any. In case you lose your meds, they're lost with your luggage, then you can have that written prescription and be able to take care of the problem right away. That's a great point. That's really a great point because I've had my luggage lost (laughs) and had Whistle's food be in that luggage. So you're right. I've learned to take on a little carry-on that has just, just enough for one meal just so I could get somewhere and get settled. The other big thing that I learned, Lisa, in addition to taking food, was to always take bottled water because even just the water in other cities can be so different that it gives my dogs diarrhea 
or some other unpleasant things that that can make traveling more stressful for them. So I always try to and to get water as soon as I get off of a plane because I know now with travel you can't take it on with you, which can be an issue. But I definitely purchase water as soon as I get wherever I'm going. Absolutely, and those collapsible water bowls are so easy to travel with. I know, aren't they wonderful? I know the first time I got the travel water containers and food was actually I saw it in an Oprah magazine. Oprah recommended it as some one of her favorite things. And I have to say, I purchased it and it's been one of my favorite things too. But I know we're going to talk about um, more websites that are available for things like that. Do you know of any that have like a first aid kit that people could purchase? You know, I, I guess I'm not sure that they have the actual first aid kit, but this website, www.pettravel.com, has a myriad of supplies for pets. So I would be surprised if they don't have a specific first aid kit. But some of these other things you can certainly get from your own veterinarian. Right, even right, because I know I made mine. Yeah, I, I did exactly what the list that you read of Imodium and Pepto-Bismol and all those things. I just gathered those up myself, and I just got a little bag at Target and just started putting some things in it, and that's been a lifesaver. Absolutely, and Target will have those collapsible water bowls too. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so you don't have to have anything really expensive, but it is great when you can get some special things like for PetTravel.com and other places that that people see like my Oprah. <laughs> I've exactly. since tried to I've tried to find those again actually because I've had them for so long and I can't find them. So, I'm going to check out this pettravel.com though. They might actually have those. So, Need that's to have great. Some with your logo of working like dogs. Yeah, exactly. That's a good idea, Lisa. <laughs> so, let's talk about going on a cruise. So is there any documentation and any kind of preparation that you would suggest if someone's going on a cruise with their assistance dog? Absolutely. There is a website called www.guidetocruising.com. And I myself have never been on a cruise. I found this fascinating. And I'm getting ready to go on a cruise in October, so I'll see this firsthand. But this website has great information about how to prepare your pet for the cruise and what kind of facilities your dog will have to relieve himself in. And I think that's really important. It takes a lot of stress out of everyone's life if you know that this is going to be provided. One of the suggestions on the website was to make arrangements when you book your travel for early boarding. So you can board, find the potty box, get everything organized, and you and your service animal can be comfortable. And Marcy, I know you've cruised before, so you have some more first-hand Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, my retired dog, Morgan, and I went to Alaska. We had an awesome cruise that left from Seattle and went up to Alaska, and it was awesome. We did exactly what you suggested, Lisa. We got to board early, and actually, when I made the reservation, I made sure that they knew about Morgan, and they told me that they would provide... Um, it basically looked like a sandbox that would be available for him for his toileting. And then they were also awesome in talking with me once I got on board about the excursions because we got off the ship and did some different things. And they were really helpful at planning that so that when we got on other boats and did some different fishing things and whale watching and, and things like that, that they could accommodate Morgan, which was awesome. That's great that they could accommodate Morgan. I know one of the suggestions is to have a kennel in case you need to leave your service pet behind when you do some of these day excursions. There's also, of course, documentation that's going to go along with your cruise, and the kind of documentation you need will be dependent upon where you're traveling to, but it will certainly involve some kind of health certificate, all of your rabies vaccine information, um, perhaps a certificate that shows that your dog has been trained as a service animal and certainly copies of his microchip information. 
Right. And I think I had to provide all of those things when we did our cruise. But I seem to remember I faxed all of that information in. So it was all done ahead of time. And then they knew he was coming. They were prepared for him. They even had um, when we had to do the training and do the drill for using your life preserver. They even had a life preserver for Morgan, which was awesome. And he was a part of the drill. So it was so great. In fact, they took his photograph of him with his little life preserver on so he was prepared just as as Franz my husband and I were (laughs) so it was awesome yeah that's great I'm sure they enjoyed having Morgan as much as he enjoyed being there yeah he was treated like the little star which actually became a little overwhelming because it was everybody on the ship wanted to touch him and wanted to actually have their photograph taken with him but you know what a ham Morgan is so he enjoyed smiling for the camera and we even had a little tuxedo outfit for him so he dressed up and and had his photo taken with the captain so (laughs) it was quite the fun trip but that's exactly it if you just do a little preparation, then it can really be pretty stress-free and you can really enjoy your trip without worrying about your service animal being safe and having all of their needs met as well. I imagine the most thing that you had to worry about was Morgan getting way too much attention. Yes, yes, because he was, you know, Morgan's not, Whistle loves all the attention, but Morgan was is a pretty serious guy, so he really, he enjoyed it to a certain extent, but, but yeah, it can be a little overwhelming, but we certainly dealt with that, and it, it worked out to be an awesome experience for him. And that's a good point you made about the kennel, because for Morgan... And for, I would think for most assistance animals, they get really stressed if they're not with their partner. So there were a couple of excursions that didn't seem very accessible for both me and Morgan. And I just elected not to do those activities. And there were other things that we could do that were accessible. So it worked out really well. Terrific. Most dogs really like their kennels if they have been crate trained at all. And it's a safe place for them. So it's an environment where they're going to be feel feel safe even if they're not with their human. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because Whistle, on the other hand, just loves his kennel and enjoys it and very much so thinks it's his little safe haven of where he likes to be when he gets stressed even. He loves that kennel. Well, we are going to take a quick break and hear some wonderful messages from our sponsors. And we hope you'll come right back and join us as we continue talking with Lisa. Because when we come back, we're going to talk about traveling internationally with your service dog. So please come right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Working Like Dogs is brought to you by 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. 1-800-PET-MEDS is your best source for pet medications, vitamins, supplements, and pet supplies. Get great savings, fast service, and free shipping. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash work, W-O-R-K, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Attention passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seatbags and sleeping pets in their full upright position and prepare for takeoff. 
Pet Life Radio presents Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet-friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. And today we're talking with Lisa Vesper from the El Dorado Animal Clinic. And we're talking about all the things you want to know about traveling with your assistance dog. And Lisa, I'd love to jump in and talk about traveling internationally because you're in the process right now of helping Whistle and I prepare for a trip to London this fall. Yes, I am. And (laughs) (laughs) funny you should mention London. Travel to the UK is one of the most challenging as far as the paperwork is concerned, one of the most challenging travel destinations because the UK is a rabies-free country. And the key to traveling to any rabies-free area, the UK, Hawaii, is to start early. And you're very good at that, Marcy. Um, It takes, there is no exception for service dogs going to the UK. There is a six-month lead time. Yeah, it's just amazing to me. And that is true also, I think, for Hawaii as well, because, again, that's an island. And traveling to an island is a whole different experience than traveling to other areas. So it just so happened. I mean, as soon as I found out I was going to London, you were the first call I made before (laughs) I called my travel agent because I knew that it was going to take some time to get all that paperwork squared away and the the titers testing so can you walk us through that lisa about traveling to london and what all has to happen sure the first thing that has to happen is a history of rabies vaccines which um, most service dogs already have and it's very important that you always keep your rabies vaccine up to date and not let it lapse the second thing is a microchip And the microchip actually has to have been implanted before the documentation of the rabies vaccine and before the blood is drawn for the rabies titer. Um, I'm assuming that most service dogs are microchipped, so that's all been taken care of for you. The other thing to think about is the type of microchip. There is a lot of controversy about microchips, and they're read on different frequencies. It's very, very confusing. But to travel to Europe, you need to have a 15-digit microchip. Those that qualify are called the Home Again 134 kilohertz chip and the Bear Rescue Chip. Now, not to worry if your pet has a different microchip. There are options. Your pet can be chipped a second time, or you can travel with your own scanner. Yeah, I love that idea that you were telling me that because I hadn't thought about traveling with a scanner, but I love that because now I won't be worried and make sure that Whistle could be scanned if I actually have my own scanner with me. Absolutely, and sometimes a veterinarian will have one that can go out on loan. There are websites, PetTravel.com, I believe, had some information about renting one. So there are avenues so that you can actually travel with your scanner if you don't have a 15-digit microchip. In all honesty, every person that I've sent with a scanner has never had to use it during their travels, but makes me feel a lot better to know they have it just in case. Absolutely. (laughs) So we've got rabies vaccines, microchip, and then a blood draw is taken, and the blood sample is sent to Kansas State University. It's the only place in the United States that does the rabies titer testing. And it is necessary to have um, very specific documentation sent to Kansas State. They process 
the blood sample and then report back to us and the rabies titer has to be within a favorable range, which it will be if your dog has been vaccinated by your state guidelines. Right, and that's pretty expensive to get that test, isn't it, Lisa? It is expensive um, because of the test and it has to be shipped uh, overnight on ice. So the, yeah. the shipping cost adds to the expense. Yeah. Do you have an idea of what that cost is? I know I just paid it for Whistle, but I, I can't remember because I had several other things on, on that bill that day. Right. It's, you know, depending on where it's shipped from, it may be different. I'm going to say it's probably within the 100 to $150 range for the, the test. Uh, the blood draw, sending it out to the lab, and the shipping. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So as people plan, because it can be expensive as you start to gather these things and and get all of them taken care of. Now, we're talking specifically about travel to London, but if someone just wants to travel outside of the United States in general, what would you suggest of how they start to prepare to take their assistance dog on, on travel with them? I think the first thing to do is to go to the USDA website, and that is www.aphis, that's A-P-H-I-S dot U-S-D-A dot gov. Go to their website, and there is a page called Pet Travel Basic Statements Travel Abroad, and it gives you some basic information about travel with your pet. The second thing is to call your veterinarian's office. You don't necessarily need to speak with your veterinarian, but you need to speak with someone in the office who actually processes the health certificates. It's a a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of attention to detail, and this is not how a veterinarian spends most of their time. They're treating pets, and somebody else, some support person, is going to be doing all the paperwork and have more knowledge of this than the actual veterinarian. Absolutely. Um, Not I know, veterinarian. <laughs> I was going to say, we adore Mert, but I also know that when I got stuck in the airport in Houston, when I was trying to go to Paris for the first time, it was so awesome to call you and have you be available and be on the phone with me while I was dealing with the airlines and trying to, to figure out what the issue was of why they wouldn't let me get on the airplane. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's really awesome. And, and you're so right. It is a staff person that really is probably the one that's going to be filling out those documents and helping someone prepare to travel with their assistance dog. Absolutely. And we don't want anyone else being stuck in the situation you were in where they wouldn't let you board the plane. That was and quite a little learning experience for me. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So the other thing to do, you've got your um, microchip, you go to the AFIS, your rabies information, you go to the APHIS website, you talk to your veterinarian, and then you talk to the airline and make sure you document who you spoke to and what they told you because I have found that you can call the same airline time and again and get inf- different information. That is a great tip for people, Lisa, because that's what happened to me. I had called the airline and thought I had things taken care of, but yet when I got there, it was a different story. Absolutely, and each airline has different requirements. It is not standardized. Yeah, that is so true. (laughs) It's really scary, you know, when you, traveling in the United States is pretty easy, but when you start traveling internationally and when it's a different language and different, very different rules and regulations, it becomes quite cumbersome of how to deal with that and to make sure that you have everything that you need. Absolutely. There is one other option. There are actual people who make their living by being animal transporters, and they will take care of all of the paperwork for you. It's obviously quite pricey, but this is an option. Wow. Is there a website for that as well? There's not one that I know of. I have just dealt with them through some other clients that have used them in the past, moving to Africa, moving to uh, Cyprus. They do all of all of the groundwork for you. Wow. Well, that's interesting. I had never heard of those. So that's that's another resource out there. It, but again, I, it gets expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Well, and so tell us now, when I traveled to Paris, I had to have an international health certificate. Is that different from the domestic health certificate? 
It is. It's a different form, and depending on the country that you're traveling to, most countries in the European Union use what's called the bilingual health certificate. And you can, I can, actually anyone can go to the USDA website and print a copy of this health certificate and you can print it based on whatever country you're going to. So it will be in English and in German or in French or Italian, whatever the case may be, depending on where you're traveling. And there are very specific uh, instructions about how to fill that out and your regular veterinarian has to fill out part of it and then you need to make an appointment and go to the USDA office or you can also do this through the mail and have it endorsed by the USDA veterinarian. Right, because that's what I did. I know I had to drive to Albuquerque and they actually wanted to see my service dog so that they could see the dog and see his health. And I mean, it didn't take any time, but I did, I did just like you said, I made an appointment and I went down and then they signed the final paperwork and actually handed it over to me, which was great. Then I didn't have to wait and I had it all in hand. These offices are all over the country. You can go online to find the closest office to where you live. That's great because there really aren't passports in the United States, but I think you mentioned to me, Lisa, that they have passports in Europe for service dogs. They do have passports in Europe for all pets. Um, Europeans, you know, they're a very dog-friendly culture and they travel with their dogs and they eat in restaurants with their dogs, so they have pet passports. And so if you are in Europe and traveling within the European Union, you can get a pet passport, but uh, you need to do that in Europe, not stateside. Yeah, because I know on our trip, we're going to London, and then we're also going to travel to Scotland while we're there. So when I got my passport photo, because I had to get mine updated, I went ahead and got a photo of Whistle, so that in case I have that option while I'm there, I wanted to go ahead and get that for him. (laughs) Again, to make it, yeah, and again, it's to make it as easy as possible, because it's difficult when you're dealing with language and the more documentation that you have, the easier I found it to be. Absolutely. They look like passports that humans have and they get stamped and they have uh, all of the vaccine information in them. Oh, cool. So let's talk about some other destinations. I know there are some, you know, we've talked about Alaska, we've talked about London, and a little bit about Hawaii. Is Hawaii the same as London as far as the requirements? It's very similar, but a little different. And each time I go through this, I have to read the paperwork again and again and again because they're both so similar, but just a little different. Hawaii requires a little shorter lead time, and Hawaii actually has an exception for service dogs. They still have to have the rabies tighter, but they don't have to have the same four-month waiting period. Oh, However, great. I would always recommend that if you have the time, you dot all the I's and cross all the T's and follow all the instructions because I would hate for anyone to be stuck at the airport. Yeah. Yeah, it was no fun to watch my plane fly away with my luggage while Franz <laughs> and Morgan and I sat there all ready to go to Paris. And we were not able, they would not let me board the plane. And it was quite a learning experience not only for me, but for the airline, because I'm happy to say that even after the nightmare experience, I worked really closely with the airline, and I've since traveled that same airline to go to Mexico, and it was not the same experience. I actually had everything I needed, but it was contacting them and making sure that the right person knew that I was coming and where I was going. It was really, it made all the difference the second time around. Forewarned is forearmed. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I am happy to tell our listeners that although we weren't able to board the flight and we did miss our our flight to Paris, our luggage went and came back. But we did a week later, we actually took a different airline and we did go to Paris. It was very uneventful. The travel was and it was amazing. We were able to get right on and we did not have the same experience. So. 
but it can be very disappointing and upsetting when you start getting all these questions about your dog and when you're used to traveling, you know, very freely to different places with your dog. It, it can be very upsetting and alarming when all of a sudden they start telling you you can't get on an airplane with your service animal. So I can't encourage our listeners enough to be prepared and find someone like Lisa at your vet office that you can work with to get the paperwork that you need so that all you need to worry about is having fun on your trip and not being stressed out about your service animal being able to go with you. That's the way it, it should be. You should be able to enjoy yourself. And I'm so glad that you finally got to go. And one thing that you had mentioned earlier, and I know this is definitely true with Hawaii, you can fax all of your paperwork ahead of time. They will go through it. They will let you know if there's anything else that you still need so you can have that relaxing trip. That's a great point. So let's talk about a few other destinations that you're aware of, Lisa. What about like going to the Caribbean islands? The Caribbean is, that's very interesting. There's obviously U.S. Virgin Islands and then there are the British Virgin Islands and other Caribbean destinations. And there isn't anything um, specific like a rabies titer that is required. Uh, You'll have to look on the website and see any requirements for each specific country. And the website does update this because things change as communicable diseases may be introduced to a certain area, things will change. But those, um, mostly you're just going to have to have your um, health certificate endorsed by the USDA that starts with your veterinarian, all your proof of rabies, and whatever your airline requires. Okay. And what about traveling to Asia? Asia is uh, going to be very similar. You will look on the website to see what the most recent requirements are, and there isn't a requirement for a rabies titer. So, again, it will be that international health certificate endorsed by the USDA and all your supporting documentation, and then making those very special arrangements with the airlines for that long, long flight. Okay. Yeah, I know that long, long flight is is really amazing. And one of the other things that we learned that we actually trained Morgan to do, and we're working with Whistle to train him to do, is to actually learn to go to the bathroom on a disposable pad. Because we were on the airline for so long with Morgan, the first time we traveled internationally, it became really stressful of getting him to a bathroom. So the next time, we learned that we really needed to train him to relieve himself on something other than grass. And it was awesome. So we could actually, my husband could take him into the bathroom with him, and he would go on a disposable pad. (laughs) <laughs> so we were, amazing. Yeah, we were all happy. Yeah, Morgan was so proud of himself. So we want to teach Whistle to do that for when we go to London so that he won't have that stress. Right. I mean, that's a really important part of travel. And with airport security these days, it's just not that easy to go outside even when you change planes. Yeah, it was really stressful for us in New York City trying to find a place where we could get Morgan some grass. So we we definitely, that was one of our goals for our next trip. And that's another thing of making sure that you have available with you when you travel is having some disposable pads or having, um, the other thing I learned was having the handy wipes because Morgan got sick one time when we were traveling. Poor little guy um, threw up. And so it was really nice to have those things right in my bag so we could take care of him. And I also learned that ginger ale takes out those stains really well from carpet. And we were able to use some ginger ale and and able to take care of that little mishap so that Morgan wasn't embarrassed and we could get him taken care of and so that the airline felt like we were really being responsive. And they were wonderful at helping us. And it was a flight attendant that gave me the little trick about the ginger ale and I have to say it did it took that little stain right up well that's a good tip to know (laughs) well tell us Lisa because our time is running out but tell us of any other websites that you would suggest that our listeners might want to check out if they want to purchase any travel supplies or if they want to get information about traveling with their assistance dog Okay, a couple that I've mentioned, uh, www.pettravel.com. To travel to Hawaii, there's www.hawaiiag.org 
forward slash HDOA. That's for Hawaii Department of Agriculture. There's the USDA website, which is www.aphis.usda.gov. For travel to the UK, there is a website, www.defra.gov.uk. And then for a cruise, www.guidetocruising.com. Oh, those are great, great lists of information. And we will actually put all of those websites up on our website at Working Like Dogs at Pet Life Radio. And Lisa, if our listeners want to contact you, how should they do that? My email would be the easiest, and that is my name, Lisa Vesper at eldoradoanimalclinic.com. Okay, great. And we will put that up. There'll be information about Lisa as well as that email address on her site, which will be at the Pet Life Radio Working Like Dogs on this show information. And Lisa, we just can't thank you enough. We could talk to you all day about this topic. So thank you so much for coming on to talk about it. And we hope you'll come back again. I would love to, Marcy. Thank you so much. You know, I love my job and I love helping people and pets. Well, you are the best at it. Like I said, when I found out I was going to London, you were the first phone call I made. (laughs) Well, I appreciate that. (laughs) Well, thank you, our listeners, for joining us. And thanks, our sponsors, for enabling us to bring you Working Like Dogs at Pet Life Radio. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a future show, please email me at marcy, that's M-A-R-C-I-E, at PetLifeRadio.com. So thanks so much for joining us today, and we hope you'll come back again. Take good care. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.